Hey guys, this is Max and today I want to review a very special Leica M mount lens for you that I consider the poor man's Samilux. And I'm talking about the Vogtländer Nocton 50mm f1.5 lens. Uh, specifically the modern version of this lens, there had been a vintage version supporting the Leica thread mount or the Leica M39 mount as it is called today, but I'm talking about the modern current version that um, Vogtender is also selling right now and that can be found used in great condition all over the internet. In comparison to the bigger brother of this lens, uh, the f1.1 version, uh, this lens has actually a quite great performance. The problem about this bigger brother is of course that uh, people who might potentially buy this f1.5 version are kind of drawn to the wider aperture for some reason because that is um, the one of the few alternatives that is available to the very famous Leica Noctilux of course. Um, but then have to realize that the Nocton f1.1 is really not such a great lens apparently and it's quite controversial out there. Um, uh, to say the least. And that kind of, in my opinion, overshadows the performance of this um, uh, smaller lens, the f1.5 version, that is simply amazing. The images that come out of it have a very modern look and rendering to them. You get a beautiful creamy bokeh. And the only slight disadvantage that I see is that you do have some slight fall off on the corners when shot wide open and uh, that at least when you shoot it on a digital camera it is prone to chromatic aberrations but that of course is also kind of usual for lenses like that so everything around f1.5 um, and upwards does feature usually some degree of chromatic aberrations on a digital sensor um, so without further ado, I want to show you some sample images that I took both portraits and street shots and I decided to only show you um, analog images today that were taken on my Leica M6 uh, because the Leica T features an APS-C sensor and thus uh, is a crop um, sensor that wouldn't give you the full image, the full frame that this lens is covering. and. So we only take a look at analog images again today. So let's head over to my desk and take a look. Um, first of all, let's take a look at some of the portraits that I took over the summer. Here you can see Karina and a good example of how the lens performs almost wide open. I believe this particular image was shot at f2 or maybe f2.5. and it gives you a great idea of how the layers here in the background um, are clearly separated um, by how sharp they are. Uh, you get great sharpness and the viewer is drawn towards her image and her eyes here. This uh, works really well. Uh, another example of an image shot at f2. Just as a side note here, um, most of the black and white images shown here were shot on Kodak T-Max. Mm. Um, and were developed in Xtal, so uh, this also explains, of course, this kind of uh, cl clarity and sharpness that we're getting here. Um, again, here I really like the uh, sharp eyelashes, her eyes, and, and everything, and hardly any fall off here in the corners of the image um, for this particular one. Then here we have a portrait of Annika who is a young author um, and blogger. And here again, you get a great idea of the kind of creamy um, bokeh that we have, a very smooth transition from the sharp spots of the image towards um, the out of focus areas. Um, Again, an image that gives you a slight idea of the kind of um, fall off corner sharpness uh, that you have and also how it gets a little bit darker in the corners. Um, but that's basically it. Um, here's an image that would give you a wrong idea about the corner um, fall off of this particular lens because the light lighting situation was actually like that. 
I just wanted to show you at least one color image. This one was taken on Kodak Potra uh, in front of this beautiful blue wall and uh, where we had this very special light coming in. This was a passageway towards a backyard and uh, uh, so we have very special light and I just thought it might be a good idea to position her here. And I really like how this one turned out. Um, the light on her face and uh, the, the blue wall in the background. Here is an image of my girlfriend uh, that I took during a blogger um, fashion shoot. What I like about this particular image is how really only her eyelashes are in focus and the overall image kind of feels out of focus in many ways and there's a certain dynamic in there. I, I believe this one was really shot wide open at f1.5. Um, you again get this very nice creamy bouquet in the background. Uh, here we were actually uh, in the city center and there were cars in the background in the street and everything and all you see is this light glow um, uh, rendered beautifully also her hair that is kind of messy here um, at the back of her head is just <laughs> in a very nice fashion you get an idea of how it's moving to uh, into the depth of field how it's getting out of focus here an image of another friend of ours, uh, this is Rika, uh, during our fall photo shoot. Um, again, you get an idea of the kind of modern look and rendering and also contrast this is, that this lens can produce. Um, that I really like here, the dark shadows in some of the parts um, and the very light hair uh, illuminated by the sun here on her left side. Um, one more that gives you a similar idea. Again, this was, was also taken on Kodak T-Max, hence the sharpness. And here she's uh, she's really barely separated from this wall, so I only positioned her a little bit in front of the wall. And you can already see this very clear 3D separation happening um, thanks to this lens. Um, another example that also gives you a better idea of how the bokeh looks. Um, uh, the little dots in the background. We get another example in the street shots in a second that uh, show you how these look. Because of course this is important to many people. How they are, um, how the light is rendered and how the bokeh is rendered. Here again I just like the image because we had a little bit of wind coming in here in this particular situation, which just gives the image some dynamic uh, to it. And here, when you look at the lower left corner, you also see there's hardly any fall off in this particular case. Um, so um, no dark corners or anything like that. And a great sharp overall sharpness, in my opinion. So let's take another look at um, some street shots. Um, this one here I took a couple of weeks ago in Leipzig. <clears throat> Again, uh, it shows the kind of contrast that you can get easily. Uh, it shows how uh, certain highlights are treated with this particular lens. It also shows how creamy the bokeh actually is without any kind of irritation anywhere in the image. So you get a really smooth transition. Um, you probably know that some lenses happen to have this um, irregularities or thing, things like that and uh, this lens does not have that at all. Here uh, just uh, an, an image with um, infinite focus to give you an idea of, of that. Of course a 50 millimeter lens is usually not uh, exactly what you would use to uh, take images of architecture but it just like doing that as well when I'm uh, visiting another city and only have one lens and camera with me. I, I do it anyways. Here another example of that. Um, what I also like about this image that is of course disconnected to the lens is uh, the gray tones in here and uh, the kind of dynamic range that Kodak T-Max provides in this particular case. Uh, everything from a very dark uh, line up there to this to some of the light um, illuminated windows in this building. 
here again um, basically myself on a photo walk <laughs> in a particular area of the city mm. and gives you an idea of the kind of sharpness that you can get in the center of the image and then uh, also due to this the perspective how the out of focus areas are rendered and how the transitions look like just a plain um, street shot uh, showing the leftovers uh, of an Italian uh, break uh, apparently and here what I like or what I found interesting is uh, you can really see the difference in the focus on the B on the a little ice cup and then on the coffee mug on the right uh, the typography is already a little bit out of focus <laughs> uh, and that's despite the fact that I'm a little bit I'm kind of far away um, nevertheless so this is this gives you an idea of the kind of shallow depth of field that this particular lens provides this is one of my favorite shots from this um, series that I'm showing you here. It was just a vintage car standing out outside just like that. So all I had to do was uh, take an image there. And here I really, really like how sharp the logo and the steering wheel looks. And then how the dashboard kind of renders in the background with this little glow in there, those highlights in there, the, the creamy bouquet again. And at the same time, you get this nice dashboard texture in the foreground on the right, um, and this uh, little emergency button, you really can feel how the wood um, might probably feel when you touch it, and how cold the metal of the steer steering wheel would be. I just really like this image and all the dynamic that is in there. Um, here, another image that I stopped down a little bit uh, to ensure that I get a nice uh, clarity and strong contrast to that door. And you can really see it here on the left side, um, how the little decoration is, uh, or ornamentation, I don't know how you call that, is illuminated. And you have those very clear lines from this door um, all around and at the same time again immediately out of focus uh, the wall on the left and the green leaves on the right. Another favorite shot from the series uh, this was uh, an illuminated uh, this is a store uh, selling all sorts of uh, interior um, stuff like uh, also lamps and uh, tables and, and things like that and here it was really dark and the only thing that was illuminated in this uh, store front window um, were those um, kind of interesting looking uh, lamps <laughs> and uh, hence the photograph uh, again shot on Kodak T-Max and I really like what happened here with the glow and I wanted to show you this image also because of the little lights and bokeh here in the background on the left part in the left part of the image this is the kind of performance that you can expect from this lens and the kind of look here another example um, primarily in there because i wanted to show you this smooth transition that you get from the in focus areas to the out of focus areas and another image to give you an idea of the kind of sharpness uh, that you can get and that you can produce even when shot almost wide open and that's it. So just a brief um, overview of this particular lens. So I hope you enjoyed this short review of the Vogtländer Nocton 50mm f1.5 lens that, as I said in the introduction, I consider a poor man's Leica Samulux, or at least it is a great alternative to many other lenses that are out there. And if you're just starting out and you don't want to spend two or three thousand euros on a lens, uh, I really encourage you to take a closer look at this particular one. Not all Vogtländer lenses are great. Um, this is well known, but this one I do really consider a good one and worth taking a look or even buying it. If you like this kind of video, please uh, remember to like it and maybe even share it with your friends. I also um, 
enjoy reading your comments so please leave me a comment in the comment section below and i will try to get back to you as soon as possible um, if you want to see more videos like that please subscribe to my channel uh, it keeps growing and growing and i really enjoy seeing um, how it develops uh, receiving your feedback and all that um, so thank you very much for watching i hope to see you soon